Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will be talking about something that comes up on my channel pretty often, which is parsing. Now if you watch my videos, you definitely know what parsing is and how it works. If you don't, and you're not familiar with the term, parsing is essentially uploading a log or a copy of the fight. Um, like for example, if I did Mythic Taloc, everything that happened on the fight gets recorded, and you can upload that to a website called Warcraft Logs. And then there it gets compared to everyone else who up also uploaded the fight. Now parsing has become pretty pre prevalent in raiding, especially in mythic raiding, but I see parsing and people trying to parse even in heroic. So my background in it, um, I started raiding mythic back in Worlds of Draenor during HFC. And back then I knew that parses existed, I knew that ranks existed, but I never really went out of my way to get a, try to get a better rank or a better parse on a fight. Uh, then during Legion, I kind of started analyzing Warcraft logs, looking at logs. And this is where I kind of started to improve and realized that I can improve my rankings by looking at these logs. So I started to try and consciously make an effort to get better ranks, so to parse fights. Now, it wasn't until Antorus, when I was already in AK, the guild that I'm currently in, that I got my first rank 1. And that was kind of a big stepping stone because I understood what it takes to get a rank 1. Um, it's completely different gameplay than what you might think is the correct gameplay. So during TOS, I was playing on Holy, and that's when I joined AK. I had pretty much a 99 percentile, that was my max, but in Heroic I had 99 percentile on every single fight. In Mythic I had between 95 and 99 percentile on basically every fight if I remember correctly. But then in Antorus, um, when I started the uh, Let's Parse or uh, the parsing series where I showed you each individual fight, that's where I started to make a conscious decision of actually pushing for rank 1. And once I got my rank 1, I came to a big realization that rank 1s are not difficult to get, rather they require you to change the gameplay from what you think is correct to what is actually correct to do the most damage. So now that we're in Uldir, I got quite a few rank 1s which you probably saw in my videos, um, and I got at least top 5s on most of the bosses, but I've kind of come to a realization of what actually matters when raiding. Does parsing actually indicate that you're a good player? So whenever you're applying to a new guild, for example, they will often ask for your logs. And if you're applying to a low to mid tier mythic guild, they're not going to, well, when I say they're not going to, more often than not, they're not going to actually bother checking what you're doing in those logs. They will simply look at your numbers on your character sheet, and if they see all orange, they'll recruit you. If they see all purple, they'll recruit you or whatever. Um, and if they see that you have like gray parses or, you know, blue parses, green parses, whatever their standards are, they won't recruit you. And this is a big, big issue because the color or the percentile that you actually achieve is not a good indicator of how good you are as a player. And just to demonstrate this, I will use Frost Decay as an example and Gahoon um, again as an example because that was a fight where I, for weeks and weeks and weeks, I felt like I was doing the fight correctly, and I knew I was doing the fight correctly, I was doing good numbers, but I was never able to get that, that top 10 or top 5 that I was kind of aiming for. And one day I made one change, and I got that parse. Um, but what it required is incorrect or suboptimal gameplay. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Just because you're doing the most damage you can, it does not actually mean that you're playing the fight correctly. Um, because doing the most damage requires a different strategy than what strategy you would use with the goal of just killing the boss. So to illustrate this, on Mythic Gahoon as a Frost DK, when the last laser beam comes down during which you're doing more damage, on progress, all of the Frost DKs were holding their cooldowns. We only use Pillar of Frost, which is a 45 second cooldown. But our two minute cooldowns we held onto to have it up as soon as phase three starts because the phase 3 damage check was extremely important. And on progress, if you had a slower kill, you could actually pop your 2 minute cooldowns twice in the last phase. So your execute damage was extremely important and very relevant. However, if you choose to not use your 2 minute cooldowns during the last beam, 
that puts you significantly behind if you're trying to parse because everyone else who is parsing is using their two minute cooldowns during that damage bonus phase however that damage is actually irrelevant if you think about it if your guild has the damage to push the boss on progress without you using those cooldowns they will have the damage to push the boss um, obviously if you are using the cooldowns so this means that regardless if you are or are not using your cooldowns in that point the boss will phase to the last phase and the damage is essentially irrelevant however on the damage meter it does get recorded so if you're comparing a player who used their cooldowns during that beam and a compare and a player who has not the player who did will obviously do a lot more damage However, it is most likely that their damage in the last phase will be significantly lower because they missed the opportunity of using their cooldowns during Bloodlust. So this is a very good example of kind of outlining of optimal gameplay versus or parsing gameplay versus correct gameplay. And this has been an issue and is a very significant issue in my opinion in mid to low level mythic guilds. Even towards the higher end up to even up to our guild, uh, quite a few people try to parse, and this is where private logging kind of comes into game. So when you private log, then your logs um, are private, so are not public, and they don't get posted onto the leaderboards. So for each boss you kill, you will get all-star points based on how well you ranked on the fight. If you're pri private logging, you will not be listed on those all-star points. So for example, back in Antorus, um, for a few weeks, if I remember correctly, I was ranked 2 on all-star points for Frost DKs. In Old Deer, uh, towards the beginning, I, I was in the top 10 for pretty much the entire time. But then we moved on to private logging, because a big issue presented itself in our guild. And that was people trying to parse rather than do the fight with the goal of killing the fight. So their goal was doing the most damage, not killing the fight. Um, and like I said before, just because you're doing the most damage, it does not mean that you're playing correctly. And when one or two people do this in your guild, it will probably not really be an issue. However, when you have quite a few people or all your DPS and healers doing this, that will really become uh, a bigger hindrance than it is an advantage. Going back to why parsing incentivizes incorrect gameplay, um, I have a few examples. As a player who is trying to parse, you will more than not, uh, or more often than not, be inclined. I'm not going to say that everyone does this, but you will be more inclined if you're trying to get a high rank to do mechanics incorrectly. What I mean by that is, for example, on Zekvaz, when you get the Roiling, the correct play is always to take it as far as you can if your guild has the damage to push the boss. And that is because the further the roiling is, the more out of the way it is. And since they move towards the boss, you will have the most amount of room to work with in the later phases. However, if you're parsing, you are more likely to drop that uh, debuff close to the boss. And not necessarily on the boss or near the boss, but the closest wall. Another thing would be cooldown usage. You're more likely to use your cooldowns in places where they will just do more damage rather than places that are optimal so if we look at a boss like fitted devourer you obviously have ads that spawn now boss damage is, is still relevant um and even on progress when we did three waves of ads boss damage was kind of relevant but you were basically required to use your cooldowns on the ads when you were progressing that fight but then when you're farming the fight, you are more likely to use your cooldowns when you can cleave targets um, or just on the boss. If you get to the execute phase and you're kind of ignoring the last set of adds or, you know, you have some kind of push timings where your cooldowns line up with the execute, you're more likely to hold on to your cooldowns for the execute than using them, for example, on the adds when the boss is still at 55% or whatever. So cooldown usage also gets affected by this. So parsing essentially causes players to be more inclined to make incorrect choices when it comes to mechanics, cooldown usage, and just general positioning. So as a melee DPS, if I'm trying to parse, I want to keep perfect uptime on absolutely everything. So this is usually the boss, but if there are ads that spawn, I also want to cleave the ads. 
If you think of, of a boss like Zul, uh, this was a perfect example before they disabled the all-star points for it. On Mythic Zul, uh, the ads were typically saved for the sub rogues because back then sub rogues could get combo points and with their shuriken storm they would also get max combo points and just nuke the boss super hard so if you're a dps you are essentially ordered to not touch the ads at all so you're not able to parse now if you're hitting the ads you will do way more damage but if you're not hitting the ads and just hitting the boss you will actually be more effective and you have a higher likelihood of killing the boss because you're putting that damage that would otherwise go into the ads into the boss. So you're facing him quicker and you're obviously ending the boss fight quicker. Now this is not the case for every single spec. There's some specs who gain from AoEing such as sub rogues. If you're shuriken storming you're doing more single target damage. However for a large number of classes and specs that is not the case. If you're using AoE abilities you're more often than not losing out on single target damage. Obviously killing the adds is important, and even if you think of a boss like Sekvaz, people typically use all of their cooldowns to kill the adds. As a Frost DK, I always save my Breath of Sindragosa for the adds, even though it would be technically more beneficial to the raid if I popped it on pull. Now why is that? Well because on progress the adds were actually an issue. So you needed some cooldowns to mitigate the fact that the adds spawn and you need to nuke them down. However, on farm, ads are not an issue anymore, so why am I holding my cooldowns for the ads? One reason, because it does more damage and it looks better. So, this is how you can see that parsing and using a strategy that you would use for parsing does not actually mean that you're playing the game correctly, and that is the big point in this video. When you're looking at someone's parses, if someone's applying to your guild for example and you're asked to look at are they a good player or are they not a good player don't just look at the numbers if they have all 99s or you know three rank ones whatever it does not necessarily mean that they're a great player it means that they can press their buttons and it means that they know how to use their cooldowns to pad the most damage um what you really need to look at is their gameplay in particular how they use their cooldowns where they use their cooldowns um, if you're applying to a higher end guild, how they use defensives, things of that nature. I try to kind of emphasize this point in all of the videos that I do about parsing, that if you're progressing a fight, you should play the fight different than if you're trying to parse on it. And I really want to get this point across, and I really hope that all of you who are watching this video and people who watch my, my parsing videos understand now the difference between trying to parse and trying to actually kill the boss. And that way you're able to actually make the correct choices in each situation with the goal that you have in mind. Don't try to parse on progress, only try to parse on farm and even then only do it if you know that you can kill the boss. If you have any input on this, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. And my Discord is now open to the public, so make sure you join that. The link to it is in the description box. If you liked the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.